Over the last few weeks, I have been re-reviewing all of the Harry Potter movies in the lead up to Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. So today, I'm going to stop and talk about Harry Potter, The Goblet of Fire. Now, this is the one where I've seen many people put it up on like number one on their list. So where do I stand on this? Well, for me, Harry Potter and The Goblet of Fire is the definitive start to the main Harry Potter saga. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Movie Master and I like to talk about movies and I'm a huge fan of Harry Potter and I have been re-reviewing all the Harry Potter movies I've done, Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban and now I'm doing The Goblet of Fire. So make sure you go down there and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss when I do my last five reviews leading up to Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Also, once Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald coming out, I will be doing a review on the movie and I also will be doing a ranking video of all 10 Harry Potter movies so make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that. With that in mind, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and when I say it is the definitive start to this franchise, I mean because stuff happens. It's more fast paced and it's more action heavy than some of the other movies. Now some of the other movies before they're more like character based world building type of things introducing things that would be plot points for later on in the franchise particularly let's go to the philosopher's stone here world builds like literally the whole world of the wizarding world i said well too much when you try your best but you don't succeed then you got Chamber of Secrets, which sets up Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince and the last two movies in a very horcruxy way. And then you got Prisoner of Azkaban, which is just this fun, interesting romp where you're introduced to Sirius Black, you're introduced to Remus Lupin, you're introduced to Peter Pettigrew, you're introduced to all these characters, and you get to learn more about Harry's father's past. And then in this movie, Harry gets to dive in more into the action. You know, it's fast paced. It starts with Harry having a nightmare. It goes on to having a death mark being shooted up in the sky. It goes straight away to the Triwizard Tournament and it's immediately just non-stop heavy lifting. It does have some of those character moments, but it's more fast paced than most of the other movies. And that is absolutely amazing. And then you've also got more great performances. You've still got Michael Gambon who, let's say I prefer Richard Harris. All right, you put your name in the cupboard of the fire. No, sir. You asked one of the oldest students to do it for you? No, sir. You're absolutely sure? Yes, sir. And then you've got some other characters like Alan Rickman, he's still in here. You've got David Tennant just thrown into the mix as Barty Crouch Jr. You've got Brendan Gleeson, you have some amazing actors. And even the child actors like Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, Rupert Grint, they're even getting better. Each movie I'm going to be saying, each review that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to say the child actors have gotten better. Because probably in the last two movies, they're at their best. And at the first movie, they're at their worst, but in between, they grow. So it's not all that great child acting, but it still is pretty good. And then you've got some elements. Some elements that I felt like could have been removed from the movie. Some elements were definitely removed from the movie. If you read the book, you know, you definitely got some elements removed from the movie. But I like it. It's not long like the Chamber of Secrets. It's not like drastically long and stuff. And it's not short. It's like it's not like super short, so that you have no idea what's going on and they're rushing the page. No, it's exactly the right length to tell a 500 page book. But some of the things they cut out, I feel like they could have, you know, put it back in. And then some of the things that they didn't cut out, I feel like they should have cut out. Like, I for one am not a fan of the newspaper reporter storyline or Rita or I, I can't remember her name. 
you know, the anime is that can turn into a beetle, but I'm not a big fan of that for the books, and they kind of included some of it in the movie. Like, it wasn't a whole thing, but, you know. And then, you've got the Triwizard Tournament, and it's absolutely just breathtaking to see dragons, to see just this amazing atmosphere. Now, what happens with this movie, if you watch all the movies back to back, this is literally the first time you're seeing a dragon in the Harry Potter franchise. And so, some casual fans will be like, oh, oh my gosh, that's what a dragon looks like. Because they didn't adapt the Norbert, the, the Norbert storyline from the first book very well. You only saw a baby dragon, but now you get to see a full real life dragon, because in the book, Normal grows like really, really fast, and you get to have this idea of what a full-length dragon would look like. But someone who hasn't read the books and this is their first time watching this movie and they're watching it all back to back, it's like that's what a baby dragon looks like. That's what a real dragon looks like. Also, the visual effects are way better. It feels like they have like a much bigger budget. The visual effects have grown in time. This movie was made one and a half years after the last movie, Prince of Azkaban, and so you feel that. You absolutely feel that in the movie. And then this movie also has this amazing plot about the rebirth of Lord Voldemort. And it does have terrible, terrible plot holes that mostly some people just can't explain. But you've got tragedy, you've got loss, you've got setups to future movies. And you've got the resurrection of Lord Voldemort. And that, that's, that's cool. I mean, like, that's, that's epic. You have the resurrection of Lord Voldemort, right? And you're just like, this is Lord Voldemort in full size, full scale. Lord Voldemort's epic, all right? Uh, Ralph Fiennes plays him amazing, okay? I'm... I'm just not going to argue with that, but right now, let's talk about the negative parts of this, and, and there's not much negatives, but there are plot holes, and there are things that have been removed from the book, and as a fan of Harry Potter, that kind of takes me out of it, but overall, this is Definitely in my top three movies. Definitely. Top three Harry Potter movies. It's definitely not the top three movies of all time, but it is in my top three Harry Potter movies. And it comes so close to being a 10 out of 10. So, our next review will be of Harry Potter at the Order of the Phoenix. Make sure you stick around and subscribe in order to not miss the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix review because this book is eight hundred pages and so before we go on i have started this kind of new thing uh harry potter fact who wants to learn a harry potter fact and uh, here is a harry potter fact straight from potable did you know that the hufflepuff ghost the fat friar was executed after senior churchmen became suspicious of his ability to cure the pox by poking peasants with a there you go, so make sure you don't miss out on Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix coming next week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Blank screen. Alright, music, can you like please stop, stop now, stop please, thank you, stop.